There was something that Jesus said, and it was very powerful. He said, I'm about my father's business. You know, one thing Jesus acknowledged was business. <laughs> but he said, I'm about my father's business. Amen? And one of the things we want to do is to be about our father's business. One of the things that Jesus was doing was he was penetrating the kingdom of darkness. Hello? Hello? In fact, the Bible says that he came to expose the devil, didn't he? Amen? And God is trying to bring his church more into the area of penetrating the kingdom of darkness. And it takes cooperation by his church. By penetrating the kingdom of darkness, it advances the kingdom of God. You cannot advance the kingdom of God until you've penetrated the kingdom of darkness. Do you understand that? Amen? So that means that there's got to be exposure. But one of the things that God deals with is, first of all, us. Because he can't utilize you to penetrate the kingdom of darkness if you're still associating with darkness. Amen? The first thing he does is begin to deal with us and get us freed up. That's why he establishes deliverance and healing and services. The Bible says, forsake not to assemble. Why? So that you stay filled up, that you get fresh manna, that revelation is constantly there for you. And, amen? And not only that, it helps your personal prayer life. Do you understand that? Because sometimes we have a hard time breaking through and we need to get in corporate worship because of the anointing that helps you the rest of the week for your own personal prayer life. But, you know, if you're not a seeker of God's presence, you'll always have trouble. Amen? You always, in other words, if God, how many of y'all want to be used to penetrate the kingdom of darkness? Well, see, you have to have the desire to want to be used to penetrate the kingdom of darkness. And let me tell you, victory does not come without a battle. So that means that there's a place of preparation and learning. Amen? Because freedom is learned. It isn't just granted. Hello? Jesus paid the price for you to learn to get free. He is the door. In other words, he made the way. Okay, here's the door. Come on in. Now I'm going to teach you. That's why he says, come to me and learn from me. Amen? You know, there's so many people thinking that it's like a drive through Bam, it's done and over with. Man, do I wish that would happen. Hallelujah. Wouldn't it be great if you can just walk through the front door and bam, you're brand new. Woohoo! Glory to God. You know, everything's gone, all the addictions, all the fears, all the bondage, all the sickness, all the, you know. But it doesn't work that way. Why? Because first of all, you've got to understand that God is preparing you for another dimension. This, is, this whole realm is nothing but a school. And once you get through with this school, and this whole earth goes and all the heavens and everything changes, you're going to another place. And what you do here is going to affect you there. Does everybody get this? It's so important. Oh, hallelujah. Would you turn to Matthew 11? <clears throat> Matthew chapter 11. So why do you think God put stuff in this book? So that we can what? Learn. It blows my mind that there's still organizations that when you come together, they don't read out of the Bible. How's people going to learn? Amen? Every church should be a teaching church. How are people going to learn? How are they going to penetrate the kingdom of darkness and advance the kingdom of light? Without learning. Amen? Do you all get this? It still blows my mind. I remember I was brought up in organized religion. And man, was it organized. <laughs> they didn't change, man. I mean, every time you went there, it was the same thing, you know. You didn't change either. That was the problem. It was so organized, you stayed the same. <laughs> I mean, you got organized to death, you know. But you are no good for the kingdom of darkness. I mean, the kingdom of light to penetrate the kingdom of darkness. I didn't know anything. Uh, when I went into that church, I left that church the same way. 
the weapons and the dope stayed out of the church. I had that kind of respect anyways. But when I left that church, I picked the stuff back up and went back to right what I was doing again. I didn't change. I had heard a couple of scriptures, you know, a few things, genuflect a couple of times, you know, a couple of repentance prayers, and back there I was again. There was no change because there was no presence. There was no anointing that broke the yoke of bondage. There was no word to penetrate and cause me to convict and repent. It was deader than dead. It was organized religion. There was no fire. There was no zeal. There was blah. That was it. There was no power. There was no strength. There was no dreams or visions. There was no fulfillment of the word. And there was no penetration of the kingdom of darkness. There was no victory. People were still crying out for help. Finally, God sent me to a place where there was help. And the first thing that I saw was the word being preached intently. I thought, whoa. I mean, the Bible's true? I mean, I've been in church since I've been a little kid. Seven, eight, ten years, I don't know. Had to go there every morning before class. And I still didn't believe the Bible was true. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> but when I was in a place where there was worship and there was change and people were speaking in this funny language, of course, the enemy was trying to get me to agree with him that it was a devil. You know. But there was something that was happening. I was feeling something. There was love. Something was different. <laughs> and I realized, and when that preacher picked up the Bible and began to speak from the Word of God, I thought, my God, I never heard this before. The Word of God is true. That Bible, that thing, that's, it's just a book, though. But it's not a book. Recorded testimonies, witnesses, experiences of people they have gone through who followed God, who desired God, and what God did it was totally different. See, so without the Word of God and without the training by the Holy Spirit and the school of the Spirit, you can't change. Then you can't be used to penetrate the kingdom of darkness and expand the kingdom of light. See, that's why, again, it's our responsibility to constantly be filled with the Spirit of God. To be filled with His Word. To be led by the Spirit, which the sons of God are manifested. That's our responsibility. It's not about religion, as everybody understand it. This is not religion. This is kingdom business. When Jesus said, I'm about my father's business, he didn't mean religion. In fact, if you'll notice everything that he spoke about, behold, the kingdom of God is at hand. Amen? He didn't say religion was at hand. Is everybody with me? Are you all right? Good. Matthew 11 and verse... Matthew 11, guy. Thank you. Matthew 11 and verse 7. Penetrating the kingdom of darkness. How many of y'all want to do that? Do you have a desire to kick butt on the devil? <laughs> yes. Oh my God, what did he say? <laughs> Hallelujah. We're not religious. I am free. Matthew 11 and 7, would you read it with me please? Is everybody there? And as they departed, Jesus began to say to the multitudes concerning John, what do you, 
you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? But what did you go out to see? A man clothed in soft garments? Indeed, those who wore soft clothing are in the king's houses. Is everybody there? Read the next one. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I say to you, and more than a prophet. For this is he whom it was written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face. Who will what? Prepare your way before you. My messenger before your what? Your face. Oh, hallelujah. Who's doing what? He's preparing a way before you. Who was he preparing a way for? The Lord. Amen. Surely I say to you, among those born of a woman, there has not risen one greater than John the Baptist. But he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And the violent what? Take it by force. Oh. Now we know that John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elijah. And the Bible says that the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. Why? Because there's a fight, isn't there? And there's still a fight. And if you're not a, in a battle, you become a what? Casualty. So you can't just tiptoe through the tulips and skip through. You may say, well, the devil's not bothering me. Of course he's not. He's residing in you. Hello. He's not going to bother someone that can't show him any damage. Do you understand that? He'll come over and pet you occasionally. Good job. Good job. Just can, yeah, just keep, yeah, it's okay. Keep pretending you're a believer. Yes. Jesus warned us about those who would come in his name. Yes, you just keep going to church and be that form of religion. They have that special seat for you every week. Keep it warm. Never gaining, never growing, but saying the same. And if you're not in that battle, you become a casualty. See, when you praised and worshipped, you were in battle. Well, I don't get it. It's because you don't read the Word. Here's the truth. The Bible tells us that when you praise and worship the Lord, you're, He ambushes your enemies. Do you understand this? I pray everybody get convicted and get in the Word. Because the Word is the truth, and the truth is what makes you free. That's why people don't worship God the way they should. They'll give a little one toe step. Yeah, I'd really like to go out there and dance around a little bit. You know, I would really like to worship the Lord, but something could happen. I could get set free. I could get healed. I could, oh my goodness, that demon that's in me could leave. That religious spirit could set me, you know, go and I could be set free. Oh my God, what would I do then? Then I would have to be accountable, responsible. Then I'd have to learn. Then I'd have to be used by God. Then what would I do? Die. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> John was the forerunner of the return of the Lord we are forerunners of the return of the Lord John got in their faces he got in the face of demons and demonic activity Jesus, I mean he, Jesus was no uh, wimp you know, I mean he called a hypocrite a hypocrite does everybody understand this? He rebuked him right to the face, you hypocrite. Amen? You Pharisee and Sadducee. He called him right to the face. He didn't take no garbage. He went in places and cast out devils. Hello? Man, you speak about devils in certain places and they freak. You know why? Because they just got exposed. Not the people, the devils. Hello? 
Jesus didn't care about how people thought of him. His purpose was to carry out the message and the truth because he was a messenger of truth. Does everybody understand that? He came because he loved his children and his creation to rescue them. So if you don't know truth, how can you rescue anybody? Those are people that don't say, I'll pray for you. Those are people that say, you're in my thoughts. Oh, you're in my thoughts. Oh, thanks. So what good is you thinking of me? Start praying for me. Amen. <laughs> and Malachi 3. Oh, hallelujah. Malachi chapter 3. Verse 1. Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. Do you know that you are preparing the way for the Lord? And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, in whom you delight. Behold, he's coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like a what? Laundry is soap. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi, purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. You know, the greatest offering that you can offer God is your life and your praise. Has everybody got it? Your life and your praise. Turn to Hosea 4, 6. Oh, hallelujah. Messengers of truth. Truth is what? Knowledge understood. Amen? Truth is knowledge understood. Hosea 4, 6. Praise God. Anybody know Hosea 4, 6? <laughs> Messengers of truth. Truth is knowledge understood. You gotta ask yourself, am I really a messenger of truth? A a am I a danger to the kingdom of darkness? If you're not, then you're in trouble. If you're not a danger to the kingdom of darkness, you're in trouble. Do you understand that? Why? Because if you're not a danger to a kingdom of darkness, then you're an asset to the kingdom of darkness. There is no in-between. Jesus said, you're either for me or against me. That's it. And we're in a new season, let me tell you right now. There's a whole shift and change that's happening. God is exposing, bringing deeper. And he's trying to bring his body in a unity so we can penetrate the kingdom of darkness and expand the kingdom of light. Without penetrating the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of light cannot be expanded. Amen? And in verse 6, would you read it with me? My people are destroyed for lack of money. Oh. Lack of knowledge. Wow. Are they destroyed for lack of health? No. No. Lack of joy? No. Lack of sorrow? <laughs> My people are destroyed for what? Lack of knowledge. knowledge. And knowledge is what? Truth is, is truth, isn't it? Knowledge understood is what? Truth. Does everybody get it? So my people are destroyed for nothing else. Nothing, 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 nothing but lack of knowledge. Does everybody got it? Lack of knowledge. Now there's some knowledge that ain't worth understanding. Does everybody understand that? There's so much knowledge out in the world, who gives a hoot? I don't waste time on knowledge I don't need to know. 
Does everybody understand that? We're to take the time and the knowledge that God gives us. Amen. And knowledge that is understood becomes truth. Has everybody got that? Okay. And my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, and because you've rejected knowledge, I also reject you from being priests for me. And that's somebody close to the Lord, isn't it? Everybody, that's your first office. When you become a believer in Jesus Christ, your first office that you're to fulfill is priesthood. And a priest is one who ministers to the Lord. If you can't fulfill your first office, you ain't getting any others. And that office is to constantly be maintained. Amen? Priests before warriors. Glory to God. And because you've forgotten the law of your God, well, how could you forget the law of your God if you never knew it? Hello? <laughs> so it says here, if you forget the law of your God, I will also forget your children. You know why some of us are in here? Because our parents didn't know the truth. My parents didn't know the truth. They played religion, but they didn't know the truth. They went to church. They gave a quarter now and then, 25 cents, 30 cents, a buck and a half. You know, they didn't know anything about tithing. Nobody ever taught them. When they went to church, there was three scriptures. One repeated twice. Hello? They didn't know the truth. They didn't have Bible studies. They didn't have Bibles. There was a little hymn book there. It's on page 22. And let's sing Old Rugged Cross. Yeah. <laughs> they finally moved. They moved the page. That's what they moved. <laughs> Don't be offended. Learn. Amen. It's about learning. My parents said no. Why? They might have known the Ten Commandments. Almost everybody in the United States knows about the Ten Commandments. Amen? But so that was the law for them because the unbeliever is underneath the law. And they'll be judged by the law when they get before God. So everybody at least knew that. I remember when I used to steal stuff, I'd think, oh, thou shalt not steal. Okay. <laughs> I got that one. <laughs> Forgive me. My <laughs> thou shalt not lie <laughs> yeah thou shalt not do this thou shalt not do that but I had no power to obey it I cooperated with it huh well what the opposite of what the commandment said so we we knew at least about what the commandment so if you knew a little bit about what the, not only that you were convicted by your conscience amen so you knew you were doing the wrong thing. So our children go astray because of where we are. Why? Because it's inherited. So what you do is going to happen to your children. Does everybody understand that? I was one of them. I can speak about it. We have a discipleship house. Let me tell you, most of the families, is be, what, the ch children that come in are because of what the families have done and because it's been inherited all the way down the line. But we're good people. Oh, good. Good people don't go to heaven. Well, you see, you've got to eat of the tree of life, not the tree of the God, the knowledge of good and evil. Does everybody understand? My children, my people are destroyed for lack of truth. Hello. Well, I just don't believe God works that way. Well, because you don't know him. When you know him, you know how he operates. You know how he works. You know his heart. See, most people walk in myths, theories, assumptions. Well, I, I just don't believe God. See, there's not a thing of whether you believe God, it's whether you know God. See, you, there's a place where you go beyond God and you go, Father. There's a difference. Most people, you talk about God. Yeah, God. They think he's somebody up there waiting to pound somebody or something. They have no idea the love of God. 
Or they abuse the love of God. They call it grace so they can go out and sin. They, they have the lie of once saved, always saved. And they utilize this as, well, yeah, it's God's grace. But they don't even understand what grace is. They think grace is the covering of evilness. It has nothing to do with it. Grace is the will of God put in action. It's the plan of escape for us to escape darkness and hell. That's what grace is. Jesus came in the fullness of grace and truth. What was grace? He held back the powers of darkness, held back judgment, and gave you the plan. He said, come on, now follow me. And you'll come out. Do you understand? He didn't say, okay, I, I paid all the price for you. You can go ahead and go out and serve the devil. No, nothing like that. He said, follow me. It's amazing that it lie how it penetrated the body of Christ. Once saved, always saved. Let you can go out and do any stinking thing you want. And expect to stand before God and say, hey, come on, I'm home. Let me in. No, the Bible warns us over and over and over in the scriptures. It says, anyone who's not willing to do the will of God and who practices the works of the flesh will not enter the kingdom of God. It has nothing to do with that. It's amazing to me, the deception and the spirit of error in the body of Christ. Phenomenal. It's because my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. People reject the move of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit. I'm telling you, God is beginning to penetrate in the areas. He's cleaning up and shaking up the body of Christ in a tremendous way. Oh, hallelujah. Daniel 12. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Daniel chapter 12. Praise God. It's a book before. Uh, I'm just go be I'm turn back a few pages. Daniel chapter 12. Is everybody there? Good. Let's see here. I know it's around here somewhere. <laughs> Glory to God. I think it's Daniel 12. Praise you, Lord. Okay. Um, let's start at verse 1. And at that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. Now, this is a prophetic. See, Israel became a nation in 1948. See, so we know that he's talking about that time now. Does everybody understand it? So Israel became a nation in 1948, so he's saying these events are going to come. In fact, we are already in. There's three areas of, of revelation. And revelation is a representation of revealing Christ. Amen? And, and because of those who are... Um, I have not known Christ and rejected Christ, he will be revealed to them through judgment. Through trials, through tribulations. Amen? And, and the first part of, uh, of tribulation is actually what we call birth pangs or the beginning of sorrows. The next part is tribulation and then there will be great tribulation. Amen? And he's talking about, he says, and there shall be um, a time of trouble such as never was there there was a nation, even to that time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered. Everyone who is found written in the book of life. Well, hallelujah. In other words, you are determined whether you are in the book of life or not when you stand before God. The moment you take your last breath. Does everybody understand it? Everybody is born with their name in the book of life. That's why children go home. Does everybody get it? But then there's an age of accountability. That's why there's no children in hell. But there's an age of accountability where will you become accountable to what your reactions are and what your life is. And in that accountability, the day you die, and if you are doing what you're supposed to be doing, your name is in the book. And if it's not, it's erased. It's moved. It disappears. And verse 2, And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, 
and to sh and some to shame and everlasting contempt or torment. And those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. And those who turn many to righteousness. That's penetrating the kingdom of darkness, isn't it? Like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall increase. Whoa. So we know, I mean, if you think about it right now, look at what's going on in the last past 10 years. You know, I remember when there was only black and white TV. You know, now you got color TV on watches. You know, you got whatever. Technology and everything. Why? Because the Bible says that when Jesus, before he returns, he's good, his word is going to be preached to every area, every nation of the globe. That can almost be done right now. Do you know that? In fact, it can be done right now. Oh, hallelujah. So we see that increase of knowledge um, is going to happen. In fact, we know that we are in it right now. Amen? Now, knowledge prepares us to advance. Do you understand? Um, as knowledge is increasing in your life, you're learning more and more about the kingdom of God. I'm not talking about worldly and carnal knowledge. I'm talking about kingdom of God knowledge. Things, uh, under, understanding more about the things of the spirit realm. Understanding more about demonic activity. Understanding more of, of, of weapons. Understanding. Do you, do you understand this? More things of how to fight. See, once you become a child of God, you become a, a priest once you become a priest that ministers to the Lord, you become a warrior. A warrior is in training. Always in training. Amen? In other words, he doesn't ever get to this point where, point where I know it all. Never. He gets to the point where I want to know more. I want to know more. He never stops. I'll, never goes backwards. Always advances. I want to know more. I want to know more, Lord. Show me. Amen. And God is always bringing it across our path. That's why every day you must ask for more wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. More wisdom, more knowledge. If you don't ask, you don't get. Lord, grant me more thirst and hunger for your righteousness. Grant me more of you. Grant me more dreams and visions. See, he loves when he hears that yes. Look what Solomon did. Amen. He said, what did Solomon ask for? Solomon could have asked for anything. The Lord says, what do you want, Solomon? He said, I want more wisdom. And understanding that they may lead your people. He's a good answer. And before behind door number two, he said, Now listen, I'm gonna bless your sandals off. Because you asked what touched my heart. I'm gonna make you wealthy. Whoa. Isn't that something? I'm going to make you what? Wealthy. I'm going to give you the riches. You're going to be the most wealthiest man in the world. Whoever was and whoever will be. And Solomon said, Hallelujah. <laughs> and he goes, Okay. Then I'm going to fulfill my father's desire and dream and that was to build you a place an awesome place see Solomon's heart was yes I want more yes and the Lord said you're going to be the wisest man there was so Solomon was wiser than the wise men amen I love it how he said and I'm going to prosper you I mean Solomon had gold and silver and everything and people came from all over the world to come and hear his wisdom and hear him speak why he was speaking the things of God amen and he was wealthy and the Bible talks about that there was much peace then there was peace on the earth you know why because the wealth of the world was in the hand of Solomon Does everybody understand that? See, when the wealth of the world is in the hands of the kingdom, there's peace. 
because the devil doesn't that's what he uses to expand his kingdom does everybody understand this the devil uses wealth to mani manipulate people the devil uses wealth to put people in bondage and control them he uses wealth to starve others and he uses wealth to promote others the God of this ruler of this world is associated with wealth that's how he controls things wealth the Bible says that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous that's one of the ways that God is going to use the kingdom his children to penetrate the kingdom of darkness as they begin to take back the wealth. Does everybody understand that? See, you're hearing a lot of things about prosperity. It is not about a selfish thing. It's about the Lord going, come on, take back my wealth that the wicked is using to promote pornography. Hello? Does everybody get it? To, to promote ungodly music. To promote addiction and abuse. The wealth. From the moment you came into the world, that's all you heard was, you need to be somebody. And the only way you're going to be somebody is if you have a lot of cash in the bank. You can't do anything without an education. Why do people go get educated? To make money. Most people don't get educated to go help somebody. They do it for self. Then they think, well, okay, well, if I can get paid to help somebody... Hey, yeah, I'll do it. But see, the wealth is still being laid up. It's not being distributed by the kingdom, by clean hands. And then there's all kinds of organizations they call charity, and that's all it's doing is promoting more wickedness. Does everybody understand? UNICEF. Hello? Uh, what's United Way. Those are all wicked organizations. And there's many of them. Many. So people think they're giving off char into charity. Oh, I just did a good deed. Right. If you go behind the scenes, you'll see that they just promoted abortion. They promoted death to children. They promote pornography. They promote same-sex marriage. They're, they're promoting people getting in office to fulfill their agenda. See, the greatest stock market you could be in is the kingdom of God. There's a hundredfold return. Hallelujah. The Bible says that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Hello? He has not changed. His word has not changed. His ways have not changed. But I'm telling you what he changes. His tactics. Does everybody understand that? Why? To penetrate the kingdom of darkness. Now, when you're in business and God begins to set up a business for you, there better be ethics, godliness. In other words, the Bible says, don't do unto others that you want them to do unto you. We, we must abide under the rules and regulations and so forth, right? Amen? Because the enemy is looking for any area to penetrate and steal your wealth. Does everybody get it? He's looking for anywhere to steal your wealth. Why? Because if he can steal your finances, he knows somebody won't get fed. He knows somebody oh, the king, somebody won't get a Bible. Somebody won't get a track. Somebody won't. Does everybody understand this? Somebody won't get saved. A radio station won't get put on to minister to into China or Russia. See, it takes finances to do that, doesn't it? Amen. It even takes, you gotta, even if you had a big megaphone, you'd have to go out and buy it, right? Jesus didn't change, but he's doing a new thing. Go to Isaiah 43. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Isaiah 43. Oh, there's a sweet anointing here right now. Glory. Isaiah 43. 
Would you start with me in verse 16? Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters, who brings forth the chariot and the horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together, they shall not rise. They are extinguished, they are quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Who do you think he's speaking to? Us. This is the associated scripture of he was in Christ as a new creation. And all things have passed away and all things have become new. He says, what? Do not remember the former things nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a what? A new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So he says, I'm doing a new thing. Again, he, stay, he stays the same and his promises are the same. They don't change, but the advancement of his kingdom to penetrate darkness, tactics change. Do you understand? So, Everybody get this now. So that means you've got to be willing to change. Paul said something powerful. He said, I became many things that I could rescue or save others. He became many things. So you've got to be willing to change. And 2 Corinthians 5.17, please go there. Oh, hallelujah. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ in the anointing, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. All things have become new. New creation must advance in the character and the creator's tactics. Amen? And we must be led by the Spirit to walk in newness. Again, He is always moving even when He is still. Does everybody got it? God is always moving even when He is still. You may think He's still, but He's moving. He's always moving even when you think He is still. You might be still waiting on God, but He's moving. He's moving. What's He doing? He's bringing something new. For what? To penetrate the kingdom of darkness. Why? Because he stays in advance. He always stays a, a step of the head of the devil and tries to go into other areas because he knows what the devil's next move is. The problem is, is if we're not filled with knowledge, understanding, discernment, have a prayer life, a personal life, we are going to miss the things. If we're not willing to change and let the old things go, sometimes the old strategies are put aside and there's a new strategy that comes up. Hello? Sometimes God will tell you to open up a business to try to penetrate the kingdom, of dark, uh, the kingdom of darkness. To what? Take the funds from them. I'm telling you the strategy right now, listen to the prophetic word, the strategy right now is to begin to remove the wealth from the wicked. That's the strategy right now. Is to remove the wealth from the wicked. That's how we are penetrating the kingdom of darkness. Does everybody got it? Oh, hallelujah. Now, you got to be careful because there's much, uh, even the people in the body of Christ are still covenant. Amen? Uh, they're not supporting what they're supposed to be supporting. Of course, they're not right with God anyway, so. Hallelujah. He's always moving even when he is still. Now, I want to share something with you. Go to Matthew 16. <laughs> and I'll share it with you. <laughs> Is everybody okay? Woohoo, glory. We're almost done about 40 more scriptures. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> oh my God. I've got to stay here this long. It woke some people up. 
And verse 24. <laughs> Everybody okay? Lift your hands up and get a drink, will you? Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. And for those that didn't lift your hands, I'll take your drink. <laughs> then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him what? Deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Now, this is powerful. For whatever, For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what profit, profit, profit is it for a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? And what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each one according to his works. Okay, we just talked about he who's in Christ is a new creation. Old things have passed away and all things have become new, right? Denying self is a representation of fulfilling this, that scripture right there. Why? Because you've got to come to a place where you're willing to relinquish your past of people, places, and things. That would cause delay of advancement and character of Christ to be manifested in you. Somebody got it? I'll repeat it. You must be willing to relinquish the past of people, places, and things that would cause a delay of advancement and character of Christ to be manifested in you. Does everybody get it? He says, pick up the cross and what? Follow me. That means advance, isn't it? You know, there are certain things that we've got to relinquish in our past, like certain beliefs. There are certain knowledges that we picked up that are just wasted time. There are certain religions that we've been involved with that need to be relinquished. Certain customs. There are certain things, the way even certain people, in other words, the way people used to dress in the world. Girls used to have short mini skirts. You know, when we, and, and so forth, and, you know, whatever. I mean, you know. Certain ways that people dress. In fact, you know, when we were in the world and we were in gangs and so forth, we'd have what they call colors. So you don't wear colors anymore. The color you wear is warrior for Christ. You know? The colors you wear are a representation of Jesus. There's still people. You don't, you don't wear cursed items anymore. Represent gang music or, or whatever. You don't wear things that represent drugs or alcohol or pornography. You don't promote those things anymore. You stay away from that type of clothing now. Amen. You stay away from it. Why? You're relinquishing things of past because you're advancing. See, you can't, God can't use you to advance into the kingdom of darkness unless you're advancing. Amen. You must be willing to advance. So there are things, there are certain areas where uh, we, we must relinquish of certain habits and attitudes, even certain reactions and how we react. Uh, every one of us in here comes from a specific culture. Amen? Whether it be Spanish, Italian, um, Korean, Portuguese, whatever, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter. There are, there are multiple colors of individuals. But let me share something with you. All of that must go. It has nothing to do with the kingdom of God. Does everybody understand that? There is no color and there is no culture. They are Christ and His new culture. And his new character. There is nothing else anymore. There's no Irish. There's no leprechauns. There's no four-leaf clovers. Hello? And, and, or horseshoes. You know, the lucky horseshoes. You know what I'm saying? In fact, the word luck comes from the word Lucifer. That needs to come out of our vocabulary. You are no longer lucky. You are blessed. 
See, there's a whole new character, a whole new change now. Why? He was in Christ as a new creation. All things have passed away and all things have become new. If that is not happening, and if you're not advancing, then you can't be used to advance the kingdom of darkness and destroy it. Does nobody understand? You know, the Bible talks about what comes out of your mouth will reveal your heart. If you're still a cusser, then something ain't right. You ain't advancing. You're a gossiper, an accuser. You're, you're not advancing. God is dealing with you. Then you're still associating with the past. You haven't relinquished certain things yet. Does everybody understand? People, believe me, there are many people who still get on the internet and check out pornography. You're not advancing. The Bible says, come out from among them and be separate. Still touching unclean things. Hello? Well, I can still have an occasional drink. The only drink you need to do is lift your hands or it's free. People are still bound by certain things of uh, cigarettes or, or, or dip and stuff like that. Does everybody, let me tell you, the, the Bible says make no place for the devil. We don't want to give a place to the devil. Why? Because we want to advance. Constantly we want to advance. He said, I give you a sword. Use it. Amen. Use it. Is everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah. We're no longer associated with our cultures. You are Christ. Amen. Jesus came to fulfill all things to start something new. Didn't he? And advance his kingdom by penetrating darkness. Glory to God. Turn to Psalm 15. Are you sure you're all right? Are you getting it? Psalm 15. Glory! Psalm 15, would you read it with me? Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle and who may dwell in your holy hill? He who walks. Who what? Come on, read it with me. He who what? Walks uprightly. Well, that sounds like new character to me, doesn't it? And works what? That's a new person. He who walks uprightly and works righteousness. And what? Speaks the truth in his heart. Well, if you don't have the truth in your heart, it ain't coming out of your mouth. He who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil in his, to his neighbor, nor takes up a reproach against his friend, and whose eyes a vile person is despised. In other words, him who does ungodliness is despised. Amen. But he, what, honors those who fear the Lord or, or reverences them. He who swears to his own hurt and does not change. Oh, man, you know, we must be consistent, reliable, accountable, responsible, trustworthy. He who does not put out his money at usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. And he who does these things shall never be moved. Second Peter chapter 1. Glory. Second Pete chapter 1. You know, this is where you got to find yourself. Are you consistent? Are you consistent? Well, I skip a little of this and I skip. Well, then you're not consistent. Hello? See, when you're not consistent and you've come in agreement with something, is everybody with me? Consistent, reliable, trustworthy, responsible, and accountable. So everybody got that? Okay. Second Peter chapter one and verse five. 
but also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your what? Faith, virtue. To virtue, what? Knowledge. To knowledge, self-control. To self-control, perseverance. To perseverance, godliness. To godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and elect sure. For if you do these things, you will what? You'll never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, <laughs> never stumble. What? Be consistent, reliable. Amen? You know, the Bible says know who you labor with. So he's going to test you. Go to Matthew 12. Glory. We're almost done. Hang tough. It's a good day to die. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 12. <clears throat> In verse 28. Would you read it with me, please? But if I cast out what? If I cast out what? Wow, that's in the Bible? Demons is in the Bible? Oh my goodness. Even Jesus was casting out devils. You know, that was a third of his ministry. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely to what? The kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man, and then he will plunder his house? He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters abroad. Now, he said, cast out demons, not only out of people, but out of places. To advance the kingdom and penetrate Satan's kingdom. That's why warfare in the spirit is worship. What are you doing? You're removing. You're removing sp spirits. Why? To rescue souls. Look at God does it with what? Deliverance, doesn't he? Amen. Plundering his goods. I want you to see something. What's good represent? Money. I'm telling you that this is, the, this is what God is doing right now. He's bringing wealth to his body in many ways. But you've got to be in position, don't you? You've got to be under and following along and in line with the ruling guidelines of the kingdom. For what? The wealth to come. Why? Because the Bible says God will give you witty inventions and so forth. Jesus said I was about my father's business. It's about we were about our father's business. But it's got to be with ethics from the throne room. Not your ethics. Not your understandings. And not your way of worldly business. But the way of godly business. Amen. He's trying to get wealth. Now, he's going to bring us wealth so that we can go penetrate the kingdom of darkness and take their wealth. Does everybody understand that? It says here, bind the strong man, right? That you may enter and plunder the goods. Take his what? Finances. Penetrate to remove Satan's finances, which expands his kingdom and puts man under his rule. The Bible says the money is the God of flesh. Hello? Money is the God of flesh. He also says the love of money is the root to what? All evil. All evil and every other kind of evil that there is. The love of money. Now, I love the Lord. But I also love the money he gives. Because I know that the money is to expand his kingdom. Does everybody understand that? It's not about fulfilling a selfish desire. It's about building orphanages. Feeding and clothing and sheltering. Why? Taking people out from the bondage of, of darkness. And watching them get filled with the hand of God. Our purpose now. Is no longer our life. Everybody here give their life to Jesus? Amen. Amen? Then don't fight for it. If you gave your life to Jesus, then you don't have a life no more. But what about? Well, you ain't got a life. Be quiet. 
But I want to do a lot of things. Die. But you don't understand, I got all these agendas that I want to do for myself, my kids, my this, my this, my this, my that. My, 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 my. No, it's what he wants, no longer what you want. Has everybody got it? Oh. The prophetic move of God is advancing. It is advancing the wealth shift. It's happening. Fulfilling the word of the wealth of the wicked is laying up for the righteous. Amen. First Peter chapter five. Oh, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And the full and, and joy is in his presence, isn't it? Oh, hallelujah. If you're miserable. Really. Don't let anybody know you're a believer. And even nothing worse than a miserable believer. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, I know Jesus. He's never fulfilled anything for me. Oh, really? He just didn't pay attention to what he was doing. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 5. Can we accomplish this? We can do all things through what? Christ who strengthens us. Glory. Would you read it with me? Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. Now, I want you to put where the word says clothed. I want you to put the word cloak. Cloak. You are to be cloaked with humility. And I'm going to tell you why. For God does what? Resist the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Casting your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he can devour. Now, cloaking with humility or clothed with humility. First of, all, first of all, the word cloak is a representation invisible. This is two prophetic things I want you to understand today. God says that the move of the Spirit right now and the movement of what He's doing is penetrating the kingdom of darkness to remove its finances. All right? To remove the finances. The wealth of the wicked is laid up to the righteous. The, the way that we are going to penetrate the kingdom of God, just we talked about advancing, right? Advancing in knowledge and understanding and so forth. Advancing in our relationship. But there's something that we must constantly maintain to advance, to be invisible. And that's to be cloaked with humility. Do you know that when you are cloaked with humility, the devil can't see you? You are invisible. But the Bible says that God resists the proud. Why? Because when you are prideful, you go off like a blinking light. Does everybody understand that? When you are cloaked with humility, you are invisible. You have access to anything to destroy the powers of darkness. Look at what happened with Jesus. Do you understand this? When Jesus, remember they tried to kill him so many times, right? What happened to him? He disappeared. He was able to get in and out of places. They, I mean, he was in a crowd of people and all of a sudden he was gone. Why? Because he was cloaked with what? Humility. Humility will keep you invisible to the powers of darkness. Once you begin to shut uh, off your mouth in areas of pride and begin to splur out things in pride, you just became visible. When was the devil? When was Satan more visible? With pride. Amen. Does everybody get this? In fact, the Bible says that the Lord's sending him into the earth, and he's going to become what? Visible to everyone. He's going to throw him right out of the spirit realm, to where he's going to have to put on flesh, and become visible to everyone. 
See, but when you're in the spirit, the powers of darkness are not visible to you, are invisible. They're visible to you. Do you understand? See, so if you maintain the cloak of humility, you are invisible to the powers of darkness. And you'll be able to penetrate the powers of darkness. Do you understand? Now, two more scriptures. Let's go. While we're here in Pete, um, I'm going to go to uh, chapter 2 in verse 13. And who is he who will harm you if... Oh, that's 3. Hold on a second. 13. Therefore, submit your what? Yourselves are every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether to the king as supreme or to governors, as to those who are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. As free, yet not using liberty as a what? Cloak. For vice, but as bondservants of God. Honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, and honor the king. I'm going to close at Ephesians 4. So two things that's happening. God is saying, listen, it's important that we begin to penetrate and destroy the finances of the kingdom of darkness. And the only way that you're going to penetrate them is to become invisible by being cloaked with humility. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 11, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ. Why? They're being trained up, aren't they? The equipping of the saints. Did you learn something here today? Amen. Amen. So you know the, the move of the Spirit then, don't you? You know the focus of where he's going. What's he doing? He's training his children to begin to penetrate the powers of darkness to steal what? The money. See, you've got a full right to steal now. You've been wanting to do that for years. <laughs> Hello? Hello? <laughs> but you're actually taking back what's rightfully yours. And you're going to be cloaked with what? Humility, which keeps you what? Invisible. Hmm. Glory. And he's quipping us. In verse 13, till we all come to the unity of the faith and the what? knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, which is the anointing. The anointing, that's power. Without the anointing, you can't overcome. That we should what? No longer be children. Children, children, children. Immature. Doing the same goofy things over and over and over. Tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. In other words, coming in agreement with any voice of strangers. By the trickery of men and cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the what? Truth in love may what? Grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effect of working by which every part does what? Are you doing your share? By doing by part it does its share, causes what? Growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Amen. Hallelujah. Is everybody all right? Oh praise God. Lord, we apply the blood of Jesus on the seed. I ask, Father, that you'll protect that seed from the devil stealing it. And that you'll allow the seed to grow and bear fruit for your glory in each and every one, Lord. Lord, I'm asking today that you'll continue to expose, remove, heal, and deliver. Rekindle a fire into each and every one here. Grant them the wisdom and knowledge and understanding. 
dreams and visions, impartations, and a desire and will to do your will and not our own. We ask for your forgiveness of everything that we've come in agreement and touched as we prepare our hearts for communion. And we promise to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name.